So for this particular class, I think a really perfect side is a buttermilk biscuit. Um, light, fluffy, tender, if it's done well. And I'm gonna show you all the ways to do that and to achieve really that nice, tender, flaky biscuit. Um, again, I think it's one of these items that can be intimidating to some people, but if you follow what I'm doing, I'm gonna show you exactly how to achieve it. This is where there's a little bit less experimentation. Um, certainly you can add your own um, items if you want to add cheddar cheese or you want to add Old Bay seasoning or chives, you can do that. So there is room for a lot of experimentation, but as far as the basic technique, it's important that people follow that pretty much to a T. So for this segment, we're going to be doing the buttermilk biscuits. It's one of my favorite things to do with fried chicken. Um, you can make a little sandwich out of it the next day and have it with eggs, like an egg and cheese biscuit. It's really, really delicious and it's really simple to make. Um, there's a couple of key things to, to know before you get started about the biscuits. You never want to use a rolling pin ever whenever you roll out the dough. You want to pat it with your hands and the reason why is because using the rolling pin is going to form too much gluten, which is going to make a really really chewy textured dough. It's not gonna give you that light, tender, flaky biscuit that you're looking for. Um, the other thing that's of really, really paramount importance is just basically put all of your measured ingredients, including the butter, the baking powder, the baking soda, the salt, and the flour into the freezer prior to, about 30 minutes prior to actually mixing up the biscuits. Um, what that's gonna do, the colder that everything is, is it's gonna allow that butter to stay nice and cold in the dough, so the completed dough. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give you these nice, tender, flaky pockets of butter that when it's in the oven and it starts to bake, it's gonna rise, it's gonna create those little air pockets. That's where you get your, your flakiness from. So it's really important to have cold ingredients. I've just measured out two cups of flour. Um, there's only five more ingredients. It really couldn't be easier. I'm gonna take one teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna add that to the mix. I'm gonna take one tablespoon of baking powder. This is baking powder and you want to go with aluminum free baking powder. You end up with a much better biscuit. And then you have the baking soda. A lot of people get these two mixed up, um, but the baking soda you just need a quarter teaspoon. It's important to be accurate. So when I'm measuring out the flour I'm not saying, oh maybe this looks like a cup and it's kind of heaping. Really take a butter knife and scrape the top of your flour like this to make sure that you have exactly two cups. It's really important in baking to be accurate, whereas in the fried chicken, you don't have to be so much. We're gonna take a whisk, and you're just gonna basically whisk all of these together. So all you're trying to do is just get all of the baking powder, the baking soda, the salt, distributed evenly in the flour. Next, you're gonna take your butter that's been chilled, and what I typically do is I'll take the six tablespoons and I'll give it a nice little rough chop. So about half inch pieces, throw it in the freezer with everything else, get it really nice and cold. And then I'm going to use one of these, a little dough cutter, um, very inexpensive. You can get it for $5. Um, and then I'm going to work it into the flour mixture. You can put all of these ingredients in the food processor, give it a few pulses, and it's done. And now I do like to use the food processor when I'm making a double batch of this just because the less opportunity that you have to put warmth in contact with your ingredients, the more flake that you're going to end up with in the final biscuit. So food processor, you're not touching it with anything, it's just the blade going around and around and chopping everything the way that you need it to be done. The other way is if you don't have either of these items in your kitchen, which not everybody does, is you basically wanna use two butter knives everybody has these and you would go like this cutting the butter back and forth so pulling the knives into two different directions and essentially you want to end up with pea size like little green pea size pockets of butter throughout the flour so this is a really easy way to do it, it takes a little longer than if you're going to use this guy um, but it works all the same I'm going to go around like this and I'm just going to make sure that all of the butter has the flour coating on it so that whenever you start mixing like this you really don't have too, too much that's going to tend to stick on this little guy right here. And if you do, if you have butter that sticks there, just take it off. Don't be afraid to touch it. It's okay if you do add a little bit of warmth to it. I mean, the coldness is really what we're looking for, but don't be afraid to touch it. You want little pea-sized pockets of butter. Something like this is actually perfect. So at this point, I think I've got my butter kind of where I need it, the size that I want it. I'm just going to take a quick feel 
and I really think that's perfect. You want to keep these little pieces of butter flex in there so that you can see them whenever you are finished and you have the dough ready to cut because again, that's gonna give you your rise, your flaky tinder pockets. It's buttermilk biscuits, so of course we're gonna add buttermilk. One cup, all the way around. I usually give it a whirl. And it's basically gonna give us that tang that we're looking for in the fried chicken as well. There's just something about buttermilk that really can't be replicated with anything else. I'm gonna take a fork and I'm just gonna make sure that all of these ingredients are really well incorporated, right? I'm just gonna give it a stir. This should be a really wet dough. It should not be dry at all. But if you follow these measurements to a T, you should be fine. Before you actually roll out your dough, so essentially we're gonna gather this in a ball, but before we do that, before we put it on the table to pat it down and then cut our biscuits, this is a really good place for you guys to go off on your own and add your own unique flavors. You can do chives and cheddar cheese. You can do Old Bay seasoning. You can do really pretty much anything that you want at this point. Be creative. If you want ham and cheese, add little chunks of cooked ham. Make sure that it's cooked before. But add all of that in and do the same thing that we're about to do, the next step. You just proceed to the next step. And listen, one of my favorite things is a little bit of Old Bay, a little bit of cheddar cheese, a white cheddar cheese, and some ham, some good old country ham cubed up. Bacon is also really delicious. I think, who doesn't love bacon? So we want to get it to this point where you sort of make sure that all of this is combined. You don't want to lay it out yet. You just want to sort of go like this, give it a little pat. You can start to see, if you look, that there are some little flecks of butter. So here and here, pretty much everywhere. That's really what you're looking for. A nice sticky dough and lots of butter flecks. So when we're ready to actually roll out the dough, you want to make sure that your surface is got a little bit of flour on it because the dough, again, the whole mixture is going to be a little bit wet. That's really the way that you want it. Just rub it around on the table. Take your little ball over here. We're going to gather this up. We're going to pat it down and we're gonna turn it like this, okay? You can feel it all come together at this point. We're gonna turn it again. We're gonna go in one more time. Essentially, what you're doing here is that you're going to be creating little air pockets. It's sort of like if you were making a puff pastry. You're making the turns so that you then get these little layers. If you need a little extra flour, just give it a little dust. Smooth it out, that way it doesn't stick to anything. If you feel like you can't see any of those pockets of butter, take your dough, put it in the refrigerator, five, 10 minutes, and go from there. Okay, that's gonna allow that butter to harden again. So just pat it out, don't be afraid of it, but have a light, light enough touch. Okay, very important rule of thumb when you're making biscuits. Most people, I think, naturally have a tendency to push down and twist so that you can release the biscuit from the cutter. Don't ever do that because what that's going to do is shrink and close those layers. You just want to give it a nice little cut up and down, just like that. Sort of like if you've ever seen a Grand's biscuit or Pillsbury biscuit, the ones in the can, they have those little lines on the side, the little layers, you don't want to mess that up. You want to continue to keep that. So I'm just going to place these on the sheet tray. Now if you want really super fluffy biscuits um, that are a little more fluffy on the outside, you would just put them together like this, nuzzle them all together on the sheet tray. If you want the sides to be a little more crunchy, then you would do the exact opposite of that. So basically, this tender fluffy on the outside, and this is gonna give you nice and crunchy on the outside. It's all preference. I eat them both ways, whatever you want. I'll even throw on a couple of these little pieces. I don't wanna disturb them too much, so I'm just gonna put them on like this. They're still just as delicious as the regular ones. We've already preheated the oven to 450. 
And basically you're gonna set your timer. 10 to 12 minutes is really the, the assured baking time. What I typically do is I'll set the timer for 10 minutes. That way if I look at it at around the 10 minute mark and some part is browning a little bit more quickly than the other parts, I'll give it a quick turn. Most of us live in these small New York City apartments. If you're somewhere else in the world, you live in an urban area, you can totally understand that. So the kitchens are really small. Sometimes the appliances don't work as well um, or they just have little quirks. We have quirky appliances here. And so, you know, if that's the case, start checking your biscuits at around five minutes, six minutes. And if you need to turn it, give it a quarter turn, just turn the sheet tray. Um, be quick about it, but just do it really, you know, fast. And that way you have a little more control over the biscuits and the doneness. Okay. So I just want to thank everybody for signing up for the class and I really hope that you learned something um, and see now and understand just how easy it is to really entertain at home. I think it's a lost art that's coming back slowly and what better way than to do it with the fried chicken and biscuits. So thank you so much and good luck. I can't wait to see your projects.